The role of the news media is central to the modern democratic process. For most people, the news media are the dominant source of information about the world. They tell us what matters, they tell us who matters. The way we vote or the way we respond to opinion pollsters is based largely on media information. So the quality of a democracy now depends upon the information they provide. The mainstream media really represent elite interests and they serve those elite interests in a way that can be described as carrying out a propaganda function. If you want to understand the way some system works, you look at its institutional structure. How, how is it organized, how is it controlled, um, how is it funded, and so on. The big question, of course, is what kind of information do we get? Does it come from a diverse range of perspectives, or are some views dominant and others excluded? The most commonly repeated theory is that the media tilt towards the left or to the liberal end of the political spectrum. What's curious about this view is that there's almost no evidence to support it. In fact, the bulk of evidence suggests that the media tend to be biased the other way. The spectrum of opinion most often represented goes from centre to right, while voices on the left are generally absent. This is the essence of Edward Herman and Noam Chomsky's thesis. In the last 10 or 20 years, there's been massive research uh, documenting the fact that the media are extraordinarily subordinated to external power. Now, when you have that power, the best technique is to ignore all of that discussion, ignore it totally, and to eliminate it by the simple device of asserting the opposite. If you assert the opposite, that eliminates mountains of evidence uh, demonstrating that what you're saying is false. That's what power means. And the way you assert the opposite is by just saying the media are liberal. Okay, now the question that we discuss is, are the media too liberal or are they not too liberal? We're talking about your letters saying that the media were biased in the last election. The bulk of our mail supports the notion that there's a definite liberal tilt to the news media. All right, now that we've narrowed the agenda to the one acceptable question, are the media too liberal, let's have a look at the way it's argued. Uh, if you want to show that, uh, you would look at the media product and you would try to demonstrate that it uh, reflects uh, you know, a slant uh, or a distortion supporting a liberal agenda. Nobody does this. That would take a little work. And besides, if you did it, you'd immediately fall on your face because it works the other way. So what's done is to produce a, a proposal which is so idiotic uh, that you have to uh, wonder at the cynicism of the people who are putting it forth and, uh, and their contempt for the population. The proposal is the following. Let's ask how journalists vote. Okay, so we find, let's say, 80% of them vote Democratic. Okay, we've now proven the media are too liberal. It proves nothing. First of all, no matter what, even if the facts are right, it proves zero. Uh, you could find that 99% of the uh, journalists are members of the Socialist Workers Party, uh, you know, or, or, or some Maoist group. And that in itself would prove nothing about the media output. Uh, the issue is whether the media are free. Uh, are the media, by their institutional structure, free to allow expression of opinion from whatever source and looking at any topic and so on and so forth? That's the question. All right, but let's put that aside and look at the facts. Suppose it's discovered that 80% of journalists vote Democratic. What does that tell you? The difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is virtually nil. Uh, these are just two factions of the business party, two very virtually indistinguishable factions of the business party. So in the last election, for example, if you had interchanged Dole and Clinton, nobody would have noticed the difference. Uh, there are marginal differences between them. True, they, they have somewhat different constituencies, and that sometimes shows up in small policy decisions, but they basically reflect the same system of power. So if it turned out that 80% of journalists were part of one faction of the business party rather than another faction of the business party, would that tell you anything? Even if you take these studies at their face value, there, there are a number of flaws with them. Perhaps the most important one is that they assume that it's the journalists rather than the owners, the advertisers, the news shapers or the newsmakers who control the manufacture of news. That's a bit like saying that the workers on the factory floor decide what the car industry produces. What the propaganda model tries to do is stipulate a set of institutional ideological variables that reflect this elite power and that powerfully influence the media. Herman and Chomsky use the metaphor of filters. There's all this information out there, but only some of it gets through. Now, of course, 
the use of filters is inevitable. The news has to select and edit information. But that filtering is, isn't just a question of free journalistic judgment. It's heavily influenced by a series of institutional pressures, such as who owns the media, the role of advertisers, the kinds of sources that are used, and a more direct form of pressure that Herman and Chomsky call flack. Key question in any democracy is what makes it through the filters and what gets filtered out.